right, here we are, another episode with Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, Fadi Kudair, and a local realtor here with Sutton Group, Ottawa. And I've got with me today, Hassan Saleh, and we're going to call him Sam. That's the name he goes with. How are you, buddy? Great, how are you? So, Hassan, you started with VTV Energy a while back. I want to take you back a little bit and just kind of give me the story about VTV and how you guys started. So, VTV Energy actually started as, uh, we started off actually by starting the company in the USA, in Mm -hmm. Hampton, Connecticut, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and in uh, Dubai, the Emirates. Now, that being said, we saw a gap within the energy industry for companies within the United States looking to purchase renewable products from overseas and the inability to have a trust base because they're not protected by international law. Mm-hmm. Meaning if you were to purchase products from overseas and those products were to be, for example, flawed or uh, you can easily get scammed. So yeah, uh, we established our company to be able to establish trust within the renewable energy industry. And little did we know uh, what we were walking into. I, being that I come from an electrical engineering background with, uh, with working in the battery manufacturing industry and the hydrogen fuel cell industry, uh, we thought we knew, I would say, a copious amount of information about the energy, energy industry. And little did we know that it's the biggest monopolized industry in the world. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at over a trillion dollar of monopolized industries, specifically by governments. It's uh, it's something that we definitely miscalculated going in, and it made it much more interesting knowing that uh, we are actually one of the only companies that's looking to recognize uh, energy as a fundamental human right within the United States and across Europe. Mm-hmm. The last person who attempted to was actually Nikola Tesla. Uh, well, he wanted to make energy free. We're looking to make it a human right because at the current moment, it's not. So yeah, we can say internet is a fundamental human right if you rec- if you look it up and energy is not, and you can't have internet without energy. So it makes no sense except that it's a monopolized industry. And because internet is used to really distract people and be able to direct them and shift them in specific ways, which is why it's a human right, but energy is not because it's able to allow specific communities and people to become much more productive. We're looking at underprivileged societies and underprivileged communities <clears throat> who are actually uh, being targeted by high energy prices and uh, low energy timings. Uh, if we look at the Middle East and Africa and really within the United States, I mean, we don't even need to look that far. Within the United States, there's a lot of underprivileged communities who don't have access to uh, energy. At a CFA event yep. in, uh, in New York about two months ago, uh, there's a representative from the Kellogg's Foundation uh, who... Of course, the Kellogg's Foundation prided themselves by uh, helping underprivileged communities uh, get access to renewable energy. And at the time, I I asked her a question and I said, should energy be recognized as a fundamental human right? Would this help you to establish more projects in energy for underprivileged communities? And the reality is, after the event, she came up to me and asked me why I put her on the spot. And uh, the reality is, it's not. I would say the majority of renewable and energy companies are in it for the greed. They're in it for the money. Even anyone who's helping underprivileged communities, they're looking to just make the biggest buck from it. So that's through government incentives, through loans that are provided by the government. Really, there's no energy company that's for the people, which is why our slogan is VTV Energy for the people. So just dialing back on that, as far as the mandate for the organization, what is your mandate? Like, What do you guys are out there to represent? Of course. So we represent honesty, integrity, and compassion. Now, that being said, within the business industry, it's very important for people to be as honest as possible. Honesty will breed trust. Trust is based on experience plus time, and experience plus time plus honesty will breed great business. Mm -hmm. That's the fundamental of business. Now, within the solar industry, we're currently working within the United States on on the field and on the ground. Uh, We have residential solar projects that we're working on as well as commercial and the u.s virgin islands for example we work on commercial and residential now that being said should uh, for example uh, you want to build a solar farm and you're looking to sell power into the grid or you're looking to sell power into a a utility company or to a specific community uh, we have all of that established so everything from uh, the suppliers we have suppliers and manufacturers that we've partnered up with across europe middle east as well as north africa and Southeast Asia, everything from China, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Jordan, Europe, we have in France, Spain, and a couple of other countries where we've partnered up with manufacturers from PV manufacturing, battery manufacturing, as well as everything from even the smallest details. So the mounting structures, the wirings, Mm -hmm. uh, where we pick uh, the top technologies that have the highest forms of protection in terms of warranties, and then that's able to produce the highest return of investment for the people who are looking to purchase renewable energy. So in your opinion, what 
would it take to have a successful farm? All you need is proper install project and a piece of land. That's it. In terms of how to, which company would you choose to establish a solar farm with? That's really the tricky part. Uh, of course, you need to know what type of products you're using. What is the warranty on the products that they're giving? Each solar panel comes with, uh, you're going to say, a deficiency over on its uh, productivity over time. And that's usually about 10% over 15 years. Mm. Uh, it's nothing that intense. And uh, really, you want places with the most amount of sun. Now, if you take a look at the United States, for example, the highest, and then there's you have sun and you have humidity. Uh, humidity would affect uh, panels over a long period of time, but we would uh, take the United States, for example, and you could just take a quick Google search online and it would show you that uh, California and Arizona, for example, are the best places to build solar farms. So you would need to know how much sunlight the area is getting, and that could also be searched up online and you'd be able to find it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really a matter of being able to know how much sunlight you're going to get. And then that would be able to give you how much energy you're going to produce annually. And then based on how much energy you're producing annually, that's how much you'd be selling. And then you'd be able to calculate the revenue that you'd be able to make. And of course, this is what we would use something called a power purchasing agreement. So a PPA, uh, where you would sign a, an agreement with a specific utility company that we would be selling you energy for X amount of years. And usually they go between 10 to 15 years. So. Yeah, that's because of the, again, the fact that they do take 10 to 15 years for the uh, lifespan because of the deficiencies. So, so they actually take 25 years. Oh, okay. So solar panels, so their warranties up to 25 years, they would last up to 30 and don't call me on it, but 32 to 35 if, mm -hmm. uh, if it's great technology. I mean, now we're looking at, and I don't want to give you too much details on the, on the types of panels, but the newest form of solar panels are the heterojunction panels. So the HJTs, we can see everything from, and, and currently the U.S. And, and European and Southern American markets are still working with the monocrystalline and polycrystalline, even though there's newer technology out there. Uh, so it's really the, the type of technology and, um, and really what you're looking to do with it. Quick example, there's bifacial panels and a bifacial panel, of course, comes double-sided. And uh, during these events that we would go to in the Emirates and and really anywhere that we would find a nice uh, renewable energy event or energy event, uh, we found a company that actually made reflective material that you would put under a solar panel and it increases its efficiency and how much energy it generates by seven to nine percent. That seven to nine percent becomes a big difference when you're yeah. doing it on like a megawatt solar farm mm -hmm. because you're able to produce much more. So there's the solutions out there are incredible. If you're looking to build a solar farm, definitely, definitely do it. It's uh, definitely something worth looking into. It's definitely something that brings a high return of investment. You are uh, investing in, in the safest industry in the world. Of course, real estate, really, when we're looking at energy, energy prices keep going up. Exactly. And the reason is, is because as a population, we've become addicted to energy. We haven't had, I mean, it all started, it started with coal. We moved over to petroleum, everything from nuclear power to wind energy to solar energy and hydrogen energy. And everyone's talking about renewable energy as if it's going to save the world. But that's not the case because we're not scaling up with renewables as much as we're scaling up with how much we're using. Mm -hmm. And being the artificial intelligence is now on the rise. You see, the Cold War was a nuclear war. We're currently at a new state of war, and that war is a war of energy. So energy mixed with artificial intelligence. How much energy are you able to produce will dictate how much artificial intelligence you'll be able to use because of the computing power that we're utilizing. Yeah, And we're seeing that China is really ahead with their solar projects. The U.S., Canada, don't call me on it, but the U.S. for sure still stuck on the monopolization of it. They're still stuck on uh, being able to fund specific companies with foreign interests, foreign companies who are looking to just establish manufacturing facilities for the sole purpose of profit gain. So they're looking to establish manufacturing facilities within these territories only to make profit, even though we would say 97% of all U.S. oceans actually carry petroleum in them and they're not drilled into, uh, all of their petroleum is being uh, imported. And then the question that you should really ask yourself is why don't governments manufacture their own PVs? It's very straightforward. We have a manufacturing facility plan for extraction and purification of polysilicon, which is one of the original materials that's used for solar panels as well as a manufacturing facility. So these plans are available should you seek the proper information from the proper companies. And the question is, why don't they do it? Well, they don't do it because then they'd be sell they'd have to bring the prices down. So mm -hmm. if the Canadian government were to manufacture their own solar panels, then 
all these private companies wouldn't be able to sell at the price that they want because the price that they're selling at is much higher than it really is. Solar companies are selling their products for an average of three to four times the price. And it's, in my opinion, it's unfair to the people who deserve energy at lower prices, being that we've come so far in the advancement of technology and it looks like we're just degrading because of the greed of mankind. Mm -hmm. With... Uh, you know, lately you guys have been talking about coming into Canada and like just kind of doing the work in Canada and all of that. How is that process going for you so far? So it's it's really easy to establish a Canadian company as a U.S. citizen. That being said, I liked how Quebec took the initiative to build solar panels on all of their residential homes. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great initiative. It's very easy for us to currently install the solar panel. We already have the proper partnerships and suppliers to be able to execute any project. Question is really on how much energy our solar farm is going to produce in Canada. And really, is it worth it for the price that it's being sold for? As a company that works with the install, for us, it's much more cost effective mm -hmm. because we're, we're purchasing at a much lower rate than what we would sell. That's just business. Now, that being said, if we wanted to build solar farms, it would be greatly effective. And if someone else wanted to, of course, it would depend on the weather. I mean, I've been here a couple of times and it's been cloudy the entire time. <laughs> I mean, your weather is not the best. I will say yeah. that. But depending on how much sunlight you're getting, uh, it's definitely something that's worth looking into. And, and really, it's not about just it has to be a sunny state, because if it's just a sunny state, uh, you'll be able to produce more. But if it's not as sunny, uh, the panels will last longer. So it's, you're not really losing that investment. And then it's the equation we need to look at is that the human population keeps on increasing. So as long as the human population keeps on increasing, our energy need is going to increase. And then we're, we keep extracting this petroleum from the ground. Mm -hmm. And everyone's talking about hydrogen and solar panels and wind energy. And wind energy is really, I mean, that's a debatable topic. We can talk about that. And uh, really, so it's, it's a matter of the population keeps on increasing. Our energy demand keeps on increasing. And there's a finite amount of material that's on that's within the planet that we're extracting that's decreasing. So it's going to get depleted over time. Of course, really everything that's being caused in terms of uh, global warming and the populations, we would say unconsciously using energy. I think the unconsciously utilizing energy is one of costs that we're paying highly for, especially being that just the lights in your house. The lights in your house are actually could be exchanged for uh, lower wattage lights that are perfect for PVs, but it's not even just for PVs. They can be for your regular utility bill. So, so just having a utility bill, in my opinion, is absurd. I, I don't think we should be paying for electricity. I think it's something within the planet that governments are extracting and selling to us where the reality is we should be getting energy for free. We should now. Is that something that we can take as an initiative and chase? Yes, of course. We could definitely start by recognizing energy as a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. We could definitely start by uh, pushing the proper personnel into government so that they could start. It's not a form of a movement or a revolution. This is more putting it into action within the government and then see how that goes. Yeah. What are some of the hurdles that you think we have in our way to get there? Man's greed. For money and power that's the biggest hurdle i think uh from what i've seen that would really depend a lot on something that you would not expect which is mental health being able to really become at peace with yourself with the lifestyle that you have and not need to overcompensate by living extravagant lifestyles in order to really cover up on whether it's past traumatic experiences whether it's uh, current traumatic experiences, these are ways to, it's, it, it would really go down to man's read. So you would need selfless people to be able to work on creating new ways for this to yeah. pass through. So you're, you're looking, because if, if you put someone in a position of power that has a greed initiative, they're not going to look, take the interest of the Canadian people or the American people. They're going to take the interest of how to make the most buck. Mm -hmm. And that's really, I mean, that's a hustler mentality. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Ethically, of course, we can definitely say there's something wrong with that because you're not taking your position of helping people uh, to the extent of helping people. You're taking it for the purpose of securing more money. Absolutely. One of the things that I wanted to ask you as far as real estate is concerned for folks that are building homes and trying to build energy efficient homes and things like that. What are some of the ways or some of the sort of uh, thinking that they should be looking into to be off the grid? Oh, yeah. Great question. So in terms of really building off-grid, uh, so off-grid would mean you would need uh, batteries and those projects are very viable. So you are able to build either an on-grid or off-grid operation. 
currently with utility companies, how it works is should you have a house and uh, you build uh, solar panels on top of it, of course, with the proper certifications and the proper companies that are able to tackle it, your energy uh, that you're not using throughout the day gets stored into the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, this is the funny part where they store an X amount. So they don't store everything that you make throughout the day. They'll store it like two hours. And then the six hours that you're getting out of it, the additional six hours, they actually take it and resell it. Mm. Okay. And then, and then at night, they let you utilize the two hours that you're getting. So utility companies are not on like the, the bright side of this. They're definitely a big part of the monopoly. That, that's what I would say. So it's definitely something worth looking into where if you were to have an off-grid operation with solar panels on your projects connected to a battery storage facility, which is very easy to make, you'd be able to use the energy that you're producing throughout the day. And then whatever you're not using would be stored in batteries. And then depending on the utility company that you go through, I mean, there's a company in a utility company in Massachusetts, Eversource, if I'm not mistaken, they were actually quoted, they started charging companies on storing energy with them. So, and specific projects that would exceed a specific uh, energy production rate would now have to pay an additional fee. So this was something that had never been passed within the United States or within the energy history. So you're basically paying on what you're producing, which is like... They're just yeah. making it more difficult. So so the whole purpose of going green is to be able to, whether you want to save the environment or pay less cost for your energy bill, but that's not happening. They're making it much more difficult, mm -hmm. whether it's with... I mean, right now, if, if you want to really purchase... PVs and install PVs are being okay. So you have silicon that's that's extracted by one company. You have three major companies that extract silicon in China. They're one of the most major ones that produce it in the world. And then these companies will sell it to the manufacturing facility. Whether let's let's talk about Chinese products. So then they'll be selling it to manufacturing facilities in China, and then that manufacturing facility will sell it to a distributor within the Chinese region. Region. So we're at three right now, and then that distributor uh, will be able to sell it to someone internationally who will receive it here. So you're at four layers of sales. And then that person will be, for example, a big solar provider within Canada or the American region. And then they'll sell it to the company that wants to install for you. And then you're purchasing it. So you're going through six layers of purchases in order to buy a solar panel. Yeah. And six companies are making profit. Mm -hmm. They're killing it. And that's even at the lowest end if each one is making 10%. Here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for us, I mean, we're skipping probably three layers of sales. And the reality is governments would be able to skip all layers of sales. So governments who would take the initiative to manufacture and extract extract silicon and manufacture PVs would be able to offer us energy at much lower prices, which is what we deserve. It's common sense. Sounds like fun, man. I really appreciate your uh, making the time for us here today. And sure. definitely, we definitely veered away a lot from VTV Energy, but it's it's in a good way because at the end of the day, we were talking about this massive sort of goal that you have, which is making energy a fundamental right for every human being out. Uh, so Sam, really appreciate you being on the show. Appreciate your time. And for folks that are watching, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And if you want more episodes of these, make sure to hit us up with the comments and let us know about any business that you think of in the city that would be of value for us to bring on the show and to bring to, uh, to the forefront of everyone here in Ottawa. We're on sort of a crusade to make sure that Ottawa is not a boring city and we would like to kind of continue that. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Thanks again, Sam. Thank you.